management of swine at the end of this lesson you will be able to discuss the management practices involved in swine production swine is an animal that evolved 2 million years ago in southeast asia ancient records highlight that swine was domesticated in asia around 10000 bc from asia the domestication of swine spread to africa and then to europe further the popularity of swine spread to various parts of the world due to the meat quality thus swine or pig rearing became more predominant in many parts of the world do you know during early periods pig bladders were inflated and used as soccer balls owing to its durability however after the advent of rubber the use of pig bladders decreased which in turn affected the commercial value of pig later after the world war 2 the commercial use of pig increased again due to an increase in the food demand currently pig is considered as one of the important entities among various sectors such as cosmetic industry medical industry pharmaceutical industry food industry agriculture etc thus it is evident that pig rearing ensures constant revenue now let us learn how to efficiently manage the production of swine. Swine management comprises of certain practices that are to be followed for better production. They include housing practices, feeding practices, breeding practices and health care practices. Let us discuss them one by one in detail. Housing practices. Pigs can be raised either in an open air system or in an indoor system. Open air systems are generally not preferred as pigs are easily vulnerable to diseases. But indoor systems are more suitable for pig rearing. Now let us discuss about the construction of indoor pig rearing system. Indoor systems. The indoor system consists of buildings which should be built in a place where it acquires good ventilation and maximum sunlight. Concrete floor with rough surface should be established for easy cleaning. The roof must be waterproof. Guard rails should be delivered in the farrowing house to avoid piglet mortality due to crushing. Feeding and watering trough should be provided in each pig chamber. A dividing wall should be made between the feeding trough and water trough. One side of the dividing wall should be used for supplying water, while the other side should be used for fodder purposes. Feeding Practices The feed provided should contain a balanced ratio of carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins and minerals. The feed should contain more than 70% of carbohydrates. Best source of carbohydrate feed are cereals like maize, oat, wheat, rice and also the byproducts of grains such as wheat bran, rice bran, etc. The protein requirements of the feed vary with the categories of pig. Suckling pig, that is, piglets until two months after birth, requires 22%. Weaner, that is, piglets aged more than two months that are fed with both mother's milk and other supplements, requires 18.20%. And the breeding boar, that is, male pig and pregnant sow, that is, pregnant female pig, requires oilseed cakes like groundnut cake serves as a better source for crude protein than the animal sources like fish meal and meat meal. The minerals that are required in the diet include calcium, phosphorus, iron, manganese, zinc and iodine. These minerals are very essential for basic metabolic reactions and bone functions. Breeding Practices Boars may start breeding at the age of 8 months. Sow normally attains puberty at the age of 6 to 11 months. The average length of the estrus cycle in sow is 21 days. Elevation of tail and pricked ears are some of the common symptoms of estrus cycle. The best way to find heat is to press the palms of both the hands over the loin region and see the response of saw. 
A good breeding sow should be able to produce about 15 liters, that is, number of piglet born in a single delivery period. Mating There are two types of mating, natural mating and artificial insemination. Natural mating normally involves a boar and a sow, wherein the mating is observed. Artificial insemination can be done with new as well as with well-preserved semen. During breeding, artificial insemination decreases the chances of injury for both sow and boar. The best time for mating or inseminating the sow is from 15 to 24 hours after the beginning of estrus cycle, care during pregnancy and farrowing. Before three weeks of farrowing, that is, delivering period, the pregnant sow should be separated in a clean and dry farrowing pen. Unpolluted bedding material should be provided while farrowing. Sufficient amount of good quality feed like concentrated and green fodder should be provided. Serving should be avoided 12 hours before farrowing. The farrowing process takes around 1 to 6 hours. Management of newborn piglet After the piglets are born, they should be fed with colostrum, that is, the first secretion from the mammary gland of the mother after giving birth. The first feed of piglet should be provided immediately after one hour of birth. The newborn piglets should be kept in a clean, warm and dry box with clean bedding. Before each feeding, the teats should be thoroughly cleaned. Regular feed at an interval of one to two hours should be provided. Piglet anemia is a very common in nurturing stage. This can be cured by providing iron-rich food. Application of ferrous sulphate to sow's udder can also help in preventing piglet anemia. If the sow dies after giving birth to the piglets, there are very less chances for an adoptive mother. However, the piglets can be reared by hand feeding, weaning. Separation of piglets from the mother is termed as weaning. It is generally practiced after two months of birth. Healthcare practices Adult pigs can be infected with a number of worms which results in poor weight gain. Hence, deworming should be regularly done. The pregnant sow should also be dewormed to avoid infection of the litter. At the age of two months, all newborn piglets must be vaccinated for swine fever. The piglets should be dewormed repeatedly once in every three months. Young pigs infected by roundworms can suffer from diarrhea, weight loss, lung problem and finally can also result in the death of the piglets. Nutritional Deficiency in Pig Some of the nutritional deficiencies in pig rearing are protein deficiency, vitamin D deficiency, vitamin B deficiency and vitamin A deficiency. Protein deficiency leads to abnormal skin and hair. Vitamin D deficiency leads to paralysis. Vitamin B deficiency leads to birth-related deaths and weak piglets. Vitamin A deficiency leads to blindness at the time of birth. Some of the diseases that are very common in pigs are Classical swine fever Swine influenza Foot and mouth diseases Swine erysipelas Piglet anemia Summary in this lesson, you have learned that swine management practices include housing, breeding and healthcare practices. Indoor swine management system is suitable for better production.